Welcome to DXV Today. We're so excited about today's episode because we're talking about gut health, what we ingest to what we expel. We're going to get <laughs> into all the details, but let's find out what else is uh, coming up on Not today's all the show. details. <laughs> Yeah, Dina went down to the Dubai Circus School to find out what they're doing to stand out in the city's performing arts scene. And we're very excited to be welcoming Gaia into the studio a little bit later on, ahead of her concert at The Fridge next week. I feel, guys, like we are in that period right after Ramadan, right after Eid, before it gets really hot, where I think we want to squeeze as much enjoyment out of the outdoors as possible. What are we excited about going on in the city? I was going to say there's a lot of things uh, revolving around food. I'm not happy about that because I've gained all this weight during Ramadan mm -hmm. and now we're supposed to be healthy and working out. But uh, yeah, not so much. We've got, what is it? The, I'm going to find it here. The Dubai Food Festival, um, it's a slot beach can canteen, 19th of April to the 12th of May. Yeah. So that's going on if you guys want to go check it out and find an excuse to eat, eat, eat. Dubai loves eating. And not that we ever need an excuse, to be perfectly honest. I just love being out and about, going for the long walks. I'm really enjoying that at the moment. And now I'm starting to plan my gym, my exercise workouts to be catered to more indoors. So I'm going to start Pilates soon. Mm. Very excited to do that. So, which is why I'm actually interested in today's episode, because gut health for me has been something that I have never really educated myself on, to be perfectly honest. And as we know, it is the source of all the kind of like physical health issues that we, we tend to have. Well, and the good emotional news ones is, too, right? Emotional too. The good news is, Nimi, we're going to be talking all about your gut with some very, uh, very important experts. But most importantly, our guest co-host. So let's find out who that is. Hi, I'm Mary Christine. I'm a wellness entrepreneur and gut specialist, and I'm so excited to be the co-host of the show today. Yeah, Mary will be joining us right here in the studio just in a little bit. But first, combining creativity and fitness to nurture the mind, the body and the soul, Dina went down to the newly opened Dubai Circus School to check out their artistic training methods. Take a look. Whether you want to do some aerial acrobatics, tumble, or even a few flips, Dubai Circus School has proven to be a hub for the city's thriving performing arts scene. But before you assume it's all about landing those unique circus skills, think again. Let's meet up with one of the owners of the Circus School to find out what makes it most unique. Marcella, it's not often that I hear about a circus school. How did this idea come about? It started when we started doing artistic direction for professional shows and we started doing dance and then we decided to include circus performings on it. Uh, we started working with so many beautiful performers uh, in, around the world. Um, and then we decided why, why not to bring this and teach uh, to, 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 to the people, to the kids and, and expose them to these fantastic uh, activities. It is such a creative idea, and I know so many parents who are sending their kids here, so obviously you're doing very well. My question for you, though, is what are the different activities that they can take advantage of, and how can they go about it? They have all the aerial activities, which is the, the silks, aerial hoop, aerial trapeze, and you have something called hammock. Also, you can do ground acrobatics, which is similar to gymnastics, but more related to circus and performing and you have trampoline, you have parkour, you have a little bit of, of all these crazy uh, circus activity. Now I know it's not just about the skills that they learn here, the circus skills, but also about how they develop their personalities. Uh, well, give me some insight on that. Yes. When you do circus activities, especially there, it seems so difficult, it seems like something impossible to get. When the kids manage to do something like that, they realize how powerful, they how, how capable they are. Uh, so they experience not only physically improvement, but mental and spiritual improvement. They believe more in themselves. Absolutely, and getting out of that comfort zone too. Now, once they master the skills, let's say, do you have any opportunities for them to perform? Yes, here we don't do competitions. We focus more on performing. So we do normally two shows in a year where they have uh, performing in front of the parents. So they share all the process that the learning process that they had and uh, presented to to their loved ones. Now, what would you say is the biggest success that you've experienced as a teacher and owner here of the Dubai Circus School? When the parents come and tell us how their kids are more 
um, self-confident, how they are improving their relationship with others, how they go to schools and perform better, how they believe more in themselves. That's uh, the goal. That's what we want to achieve with the, with the kids. I love that. And I gave you goosebumps. Now, uh, Marcella, do you want to teach me how to do something? Yeah, let's do What do you want to do? <laughs> I don't know. What do you recommend? Give me something easy. You can have, um, I would say you can try the seals, aerial seals. Yes, and some trampoline. Yeah. <laughs> to learn some unique skills, gain some confidence, or find some inner peace while doing it all, well, now you know where to come. Cirque du Soleil, watch out, because you got a whole bundle of Dubai talent coming your way. Just in case all fails over here, as a TV <laughs> presenter, you guys know where I'll be heading next. <laughs> On that note, our co-host today is a renowned figure in integrative health, sharing her insights on a global scale to help individuals choose a life of wellness. Welcome, Mary Christine, to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a wonderful, wonderful time of, of in the world today when it comes to health and well-being. So I'm really happy to be here. Now, Mary, I have so many issues with my gut, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is you do. So explain to me what a gut specialist is in charge of. Sure, it's um, a specialist that gets in charge with taking care of your gut microbiome, all of the bacteria that go on right here. So you're going to tell me off for taking antibiotics like a million times a year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's then. talk about that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good germs and bad germs though, right? Because I think there's a misconception about that, that you need to have your gut completely clean of all kind of germs, is that right? That's right. Okay. What, what is that? Well, how do we know what is good germs and bad germs for, for our gut? So our gut microbiota comprises of a lot of like good bacteria, bad bacteria, but with certain lifestyle factors and the things that we do, we're obviously populating way more bad bacteria than the good bacteria, and that's when we develop a lot of problems. Mm. So to make it just really simple for everyone, it's really just that our gut microbiome cannot thrive without the good and bad bacteria combined. So you really need to have both. Mm -hmm. All right, so Mary, what, what, what's the main thing that people are doing wrong when it comes to their gut health that the average person shouldn't be doing? Eating highly processed foods. I knew you were going to say that. A lot of sugar. She's looking right at you too when she's saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, it's really just trying to understand like what's the balance, right? Because people talk about this all the time, like you require balance, but what's balance? We're all so different and we're not all genetically the same. And even though we come, for example, from the same family, our, our genetic composition and even our, our, our gut microbiota are all very different. So um, I would say balance is really just the 80-20 rule. It's just eating most of the time really healthy and 20% eating whatever you want. But what ha tends to happen is people eat 80% unhealthy and 20%. But that's the thing, isn't it? Because people might think, oh, once I can see that I've gone a little bit bigger, that means I need to take it seriously. I would say I'm not extremely chubby, but I recently did a bo body composition test and apparently my visceral fat is on the high end, like not even over, it's like mm. in the high end. So I need to look after that. So when should people go and check their gut? Yeah, so it's a good point that you mentioned about visceral fat, because not a lot of people know that and, and truly understand what that is. So visceral fat is really just all the fat that you have here in your midsection. And the more fat that you have there, it starts crushing your organs. And that's when you start developing chronic inflammation, you have problems going to the toilet, you're constipated, those kind of issues. So really for people to want to take care of their health and, and be more mindful about that, that's a section that you really need to, to worry about the most, you know? Oh, I am. I am worried about it. <laughs> you can tell. He goes, he's going through drive through right after this. <laughs> okay, my question is about intolerances. How do they play into gut health? Because I find I, I get confused about all these different aspects. I mean, everyone's taking intolerance tests now. Um, how much do we need to respect the results of that? How seriously do we need to be taking that? How much can that help with our gut health? Food intolerances change with every individual in the span of every six months. You know, they're always changing so I wouldn't say that a, f a food intolerance test that people do once every 10 years is the right way I think it's really important that you're taking tests twice a year especially if you are starting to develop symptoms that you don't normally have and as we age we are you know developing a lot of various different um, bacteria, environmental toxins we live in very different 
um, cities were moving around all the time, we were traveling, you know, like for example, let's just say what happened during uh, the COVID period, people are still suffering from long COVID and people are suffering from having a bit of um, um, implications to that. So when it comes to food intolerances, I would say that stay away from dairy, definitely. So for people who My love issue. their dairy, it's better to limit the amount of dairy that you're consuming, of course. Um, sugar, sugar is massive when it comes to inflammation and it really causes a lot of problems for inflammation. And like they say, you know, inflammation is the cause of all disease. I was just thinking about all the things that I regularly eat and how it's the opposite of everything Mary's sharing with us today. Um, Mary, there is such a significant connection between gut health and skin conditions. Um, talk to me about that and why that if people are suffering with a skin condition, they should actually look as to what's happening in the gut. It's a beautiful topic and it's one of my favorite topics to talk about because, you know, we're all obsessed over skin health. Mm -hmm. You know, we spend so much money in really trying to take care of our skin, um, but people don't really realize that skin health has a lot to do with gut health. And really the way you look on the outside has a lot to do with how you take care of your insides. So um, one of the factors of really, you know, when you start developing really terrible skin health and you're starting to see like you're starting to age, develop wrinkles, maybe develop acne even in your 30s and 40s that you wouldn't normally develop, I'd say it has a lot to do with really high sugar intake because mm -hmm. that causes like advanced glycation end products and advanced glycation end products uh, what that does is that it starts to deteriorate the collagen and the skin the elastin fibers in your skin and we, we all know the importance of collagen mm -hmm. and um, how that we do lose collagen as as we age and in order to protect um, your skin health you need to make sure that you're consuming not refined types of sugars you know, it's impossible to not get sugar from anything because we love fruit, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, so I, I, I think just understanding that where you get your source of sugar from, the amount of sugar that you're consuming, uh, the kind of skincare products that you're using, because a lot of skincare products these days have a lot of toxic chemicals in them. Um, I did have a client at one point that was um, having all of these flare ups and all of these insane amount of skin conditions. And really, when we did the, the hair analysis test, we saw that she had um, a number of uh, heavy metals um, in her body. Wow. And you get that from a lot of the skincare products, not just mm. from the food, from the air that we breathe and so on, but also from skincare products. Coming up, we're getting clinical advice on common gut problems here in the UAE, which you need to look out for with a gastroenterologist. Stay with us.